third of our championships at the European Weightlifting Championships, the penultimate day. And today, and this evening in particular, it's the 105 kilo category for men that occupies a centre stage. This is a competitive category as ever, but there is one man in particular who stands out amongst the field of nine, and he is the Russian David Bejanyan. He won the President's Cup after the World Championships in Paris, in Belgorod, uh, in Russia, close to the Ukrainian border. In doing so, he also set a new clean and jerk world record. And as you see the start list there, uh, he is perhaps the man who potentially will excite us the most this evening. We begin though with Sergei uh, Tajirov, representing Ukraine, the junior world silver medalist, and here representing Belarus is Mikhail Alzeyev, the European silver medalist of six years ago. Junior world champion two years ago, Arturos Plesniks of uh, Latvia, just 20. And representing Lithuania, uh, Egidus uh, Remetsa. This is Cornel Szczyk Szekil of Poland. Silver medalist in the under 23 European Championships a couple of years ago. Maxim Sheko, another Russian all the way from Vladivostok. And this is the man that I referred to right at the beginning of this evening, David uh, Berjanyan. Arkadius uh, Michalska, a coal miner on his day-to-day -day job for Poland. And this is the Hungarian uh, Gurkovic, a man who, if you go back, actually won a silver medal in the 2004 Athens Olympic Games, only to have it taken away from him because he was a naughty boy taking illegal substances. And completing the lineup, a man who was inspired by Georgi Azanice, Aluda Managatse, who saw Azanice win the Olympic title in 2004 and at the age of eight started to seriously train. Well, this is Martin Tesovic. Martin, a European champion in this particular category, if you wind back the years to 2007, he was the man who put together in those toys a total of 411 kilos in Strasbourg. He's always been a good lifter, but he's also always suffered from back problems. But at the age of 37, he's come out here and he's put three good snatch attempts together, 165 being the best of them, and then came out for the clean and jerk and put in this effort of 190. Then rather disappointed himself and his coaching team because he had two goes at 200 and managed neither of them and ultimately left himself on 355, which is the best of the B group that competed earlier in the day. And as ever, unless everything goes terribly wrong, then he shouldn't uh, move too high up into the A group. They should all supersede him as the evening unfolds. So, Tesovic with 355, the best total so far. And the man who I think is going to get us underway is going to be the Polish lifter. Meanwhile, just a reminder of some past winners. And you can see plenty of Russian success over the years. Vladimir Smorchkov came out of the mist and smoke in days gone by to win it from the B group.
So about 40 seconds to go. This is the scene in the warm-up room. The world record in the snatch, Andre Aronov, the Olympic champion, 200 kilos, preparing for the Olympic Games. He also holds the total record at senior and European level, 436. That's also a junior record. He holds those. And uh, David Bajanian of Russia, he's the man who's in tonight's competition, who's set in that President's Cup the European and World clean and jerk record of 238. The Russians who will make their final decisions after the Russian Championships at the end of May. So the first man out, this is Arkadia Smikowska, sit back with Randy Strossen from Iron Mind and myself David Goldstrom, enjoy the action, this is usually, hopefully not the commentator's curse, this is usually a pretty good contest and this is the man who by day is a coal miner, his dad's a coal miner as well, he uh, lives pretty close to Rotslav in the southeast corner of Poland. Very measured. And so far, his achievements have really been confined to European stages. The best, the most recent, and that was in the under 23 Europeans. Pretty good, Randy. Yeah, not blindingly quick, but you know what? It's a good, solid lift. The weights that he's lifting, not at the very top tier internationally, but very decent. He's acquitting himself well. Yeah, that's actually 162. It's where he's been before 163, he's succeeded at as well. And what he did do in that uh, championship last year, the European Under-23, six out of six, so really good sequence. He'll be hoping to emulate that or repeat that, I should say. And the bar going to 165 for the first appearance of the Latvian. This is Artur Plesniex. Weighed in at 104.37 kilos, the light men in the class, Cornel Szekiel of Poland, 102.26, and also David ben Bedjanian, only 102.94, so that gives them an edge in a different way. Now, Latvia, yet to arrive on the medal roster as we speak, but who knows, maybe this will be the competition for them. 165. junior European champion last year and he's opening up on the kilos that he finished on in that competition. Just 20. Almost a little duck walk but he's I think acquitted that in the required manner. Three white lights. Got moved up to his toes trying to save that. I think the, the left foot at least. Not really a lift so different uh, from the last attempt. Nice and smooth. There's a step. Save the lift. Good for him. Making a little adjustment. Did what it took. And he goes into the lead ahead of Martin Tosovic, who lifted in the B group, was the most successful man by virtue of lighter body weight. And the bar stays on 165 for Akadiusz Michalski to come out again. Now, 165 does represent a new challenge for him in terms of success on a competition stage. Three kilo increase, should be able to manage this. Rather deliberate in the first attempt. Yeah. Well, he got out of first gear. Well, it looked, I, I mean, I think it looked exactly the same in the first attempt. It was just three kilos heavier, so put some more weight on the bar. Well, I thought there was a bit more pace to that, a bit more energy, to be honest. Well, I don't know. To me, it was it was similar. Definitely more similar than different, just a little bit heavier, and he's got more he can do. Well, we'll have to beg to differ on that. I thought it was quicker, more. He attacked it more, and he got the reward. And anyway, it's 165, it's a good lift. To respect my elders, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That'll cost you a round of drinks. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we, got, we have a birthday boy. I'm talking about age, right? We have a birthday boy in the field tonight. We do have a birthday boy, the uh, second of the two Russians, if that's not a wrong way to <laughs> describe him. Maxim Shako, all the way from Vladivostok. What if they got the birthday cake? Yeah. Good. NTV Plus, who are broadcasting these championships across Russia. Hopefully, uh, Maxim's wife will be tuning in to watch him. We'll perhaps give her a mention when we see him on stage. But at the moment, the bar is going to 167. Now, nobody else wants this sort of weight. Uh, just to give you an idea, out there for Belarus, 175. Um, 180 for Shaco, the man I was talking about just a moment ago. And 175 for Bedzanyan, who's... Well, expertise, shall we say, is best in the clean and jerk. 176 for Gerkovitz of Hungary. Well, this is Poland's man. I was talking to one or two of the Poles. I was asking about Adrian Jelinski, who is very much on their roster to go to the London Olympic Games. He's actually away training, not in Poland for the Olympics, but actually in Georgia. And I said, well, is that the air? So, more than half a minute, so plenty of time to manage this. So this for three out of three. He is in the lead at the moment, so this is to enhance it by another two kilos. And I have to say, that's three good efforts. He ends on 167, and putting that into context, that's four kilos better than anything before. Watch on the replay. Once again, cookie cutter, but he will be a little lower. Watch his hips, gets a little lower. That's because the weight's heavier. Knocked him off like bowling pins. One, two, three. Sergei Tajirov representing the Ukraine. Three hundred and eighty his entered total. Again, another relatively inexperienced man who's done most of his lifting in the European division until now. And last year was a lowly was actually outside the top fifteen in the rankings, so looking for better things. One seventy. Well, plenty of fire in the belly, yeah. and he's opened up, actually, Randy, on a level at 170. Very familiar territory. I mean, he's, the last three years, he's been knocking off 170. Actually, 173 is the best that I could find in competition for him. You know, the replay gave you a good sense of why I say this is like jumping with the bar. You could see that extension. Well, one Polish lifter has accomplished a set of personal targets because not everybody can go for the medals, but Michalska's done it, and here's the other man, Cornel Szekiel, 24 years of age, a couple of years older than Michalski, and 12th in Paris, made five out of his six lifts there, contributed 172 kilos to a total of 386, did 174 in this section of the competition last year in Kazan. So he's in with a conservative start, shall we say. No problem taking the odd step forward. And he gets duly the three white lights. Again, I'd be looking for him to try to get up to 178-ish, to be perfectly honest. Managatze for Georgia. Georgia, who had a really good evening 
with uh, their man in the 85 kilo class yesterday struck gold Rauli Sirakidze so hopefully that success has translated And the great Georgia as an inter in the wings and coaching another man who's gone back to Georgia to help them, uh, Ivan uh, Gaikorov, who's travelled around a little bit, but apparently is now back in Georgia. Yeah, still lives in uh, Ivan Gaikorov. He still lives in Chicago, Poland, I believe, but he does go back and. I think um, he's their head coach again. Well, there's a real determination to rebuild this Georgian team. Well, they start with Kaki Kakashvili, who, of course, is a yeah. legend in the sport. And then yeah. uh, Georgia Asanita, and, you know, another Olympic gold medalist from Georgia. And Ivan Gorby is the, was the coach. I mean, he was the architect of those successful athletic careers. Yeah, he's one of those coaches who's traveled, but actually, wherever he's traveled, he's actually brought success or helped success to happen. So this is Plesny X for Latvia. Five kilo increase, 170 to go into second place behind Managadze of Georgia. Different style, but gets the job done. Of course, the Georgians who've got a terrific history, particularly uh, producing lifters who excel in the snatch discipline. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you said that about style because, you know, when I watched him snatch, I thought of one of his countrymen, Victor Shabatis. Because up, down, up, down, up, down. It was yeah. piston like in its precision. And I thought of him when I was watching this lift. He, by the way, is not competing, has pulled out, has decided, I think now he's about 37 years old, that he just, his body cannot take yet another Olympics. But, you know, he's been world champion, he's been European champion. I mean, he's, he's contributed. Well, he's, he's been the flag flyer for, what, 10, 15 years for them? Yeah. yeah. Just an institution in the super heavyweight class. I'm actually not sure whether he's, he was a member of parliament. I'm not sure if he still is the yeah. member of parliament there. Yeah, I know about the was also, and also don't know about yeah. who the is. It's true. Don't really follow the uh, po Latvian politics to that closely. Seems to be a career path, right? Because Gerlov is the same thing in Belarus, right? He's a member of parliament, and, you know, uh, Asanita is in Georgia. That's what Olympic success can bring to you. I think they tried to run Naeem for office, and even here he couldn't run. This is Cornell Shekhil, four kilos up on the first attempt. First miss. And he was quite away from that. Yeah, too bad we, you know, we break the string of perfect you know, lifts, good lifts. Wide foot stance when he starts, the pop there. And doesn't really turn the hands over aggressively at the top of the pole. When you're going to the bar, you have to really turn those wrists over and just lock that thing out. And I wasn't sure that he had that aggressive finish there. Might have a better, better view than here at this angle. Watch his wrists. Turns him over. Leaves this thing dangling out front. Yeah, really limits his possibilities, that failure. He's got a bit more time to recover because Plesny X wants to come out and complete his sequence on 174. And 174 here, if he does this, well, he will go momentarily into the lead. Still, out there for Belarus to start his campaign. Sheiko and Bedjanian of Russia waiting in the wings. Uh, Gokovic of Hungary yet to start as well. So this is... A story with many chapters yet. No. And the second red light. Of course, the third attempts are where you really are pushing yourself. But a little disappointing for him that he didn't manage that. One miss in front, one miss behind. Usually when you miss behind, it's because you have swung the barbell. Now he's done 173, so 174 was a perfectly reasonable attempt. And now 
Shekil, who I was hoping was going to try to head towards 178, can't do that because he has to get the 174, and that's the third and final life that he has in this half of the competition. So once again, if he does it, he will actually go into first place for the moment. Well, this is what sometimes happens. You're going along nicely, everybody's moving forward, and then suddenly somebody puts a plank in front of you. Right, you say, ah, I wish I'd be more appreciative when they're kneeling on the list. I, I thought he came off the floor a little fast with that. You want to start slowly to keep control of the barbell. Bar going up to 175 kilos, which is 25 kilos short of the European and World snatch record set by Andre Aramnov of Belarus, who actually owns everything. He owns the junior, the European junior, the European senior, the world junior, the world senior. They all belong to him. Except the Olympic, cha the Olympic champion who. Um, Certainly had a bit of attitude when he went back from Beijing. Uh, Over-celebrated, had loads of arguments. I'm being polite here. Yeah, <laughs> over-celebrated, I like that. That's a, that's a prison for partying uh, to the uninitiated. Was looked after by the authorities for a few hours, a few days. That means incarcerated. <laughs> oh, just his welfare. Had a bit of a ding dong with his coach. Well, I think they're back together again now. <laughs> I'm not talking about this man, I'm talking about his uh, teammate, Aramnov. And that's a good second, uh, oh, sorry, good first attempt. Beg your pardon, that's a very good first attempt. You know, we'll get the replay, but I was going to say he almost did that in slow motion for us. 175. And that takes him into the lead. Mikhail Aldzev, he's very experienced, 30 years of age. And now comes the first of the two Russians, David Vedjanyan, the winner of the President's Cup in honor of President Medvedev in the, well, to us little known city of Belgorod. But since winning that, He's certainly a name that we've come to respect. Opening up on 175. Body weight will put him into first place. So, made nothing of that. But Zanyan... It wasn't completely unknown. He'd actually won the European Under-23 title in 2009 and 2010, so he was on his way, but what he did in the President's Cup was way ahead of anything that we'd previously seen. And straight out is uh, Tajirov for the Ukraine. Five kilo increase. Now, again, body weight already beginning to come into play. He's going for 175. I'll work this out here because he weighed in at 4.62 lifts the weight and goes in front of Adzea 104.73 and Bedzanyan 104.76 Good shot there of how the body extends it's like a, a chain reaction to move the barbell Oh. 
Well, the bar took its own momentum there. And Managatsi's got one more attempt. Pumps the hips, starts to pull shoulders back. You saw him roll them, tries to keep his elbows out, keep the arms straight, and just lost it behind. Here it comes. You can see it graze the hips, and that's what knocked it in the arc that made him lose it. There is a demonstration of stretch the bar at the top. It helps you lock out your arms if you think stretch the arms rather than press with the arms. You don't see a lot of lifters wear a belt for the snatch. In fact, there are a lot now who don't even wear one for a clean and jerk, but here's one who did. He does. Following himself because, oh no, in fact, uh, what bar 176 now for uh, Gurkovic? So uh, Tajirov has put the bar to 178. Out there for Belarus. Uh, 180 will be his next lift. Uh, Shaco due to coming at 180. But Janian's put the bar to 180. And here is this man who, well, for the rest of his life, as he has done now for eight years, can reflect on what he achieved in Athens and the way he achieved it and the punishment he received for what he did. Now 32 years of age, ninth in Europe last year. I don't know, to me, David, that looked a little rugged on an opener, didn't you think? It looked like he was struggling there quite a bit with the weight itself, which you normally don't see in the snatch. Watch him stand up. Looking heavy to me, to, you know, for him. Yeah. We'll see. Here's an interesting uh, point as uh, this man gets ready to come out well, 176. 177 on the bar for uh, now. No, stop, stop. stop, this is wrong. Yeah, yeah this is it. wrong. I was going to say, this is all wrong. Whilst they sort that out, the, the question I was going to ask you actually, Randy, there's quite a debate going on. It, it emanates in Great Britain quite strongly, which is um, it's Managadze trying to put things right at 177, having failed at 175. So he's trying to keep himself sort of on track here. Well, that's a repeat of the previous failure. Yeah, you know, they, they have a lot of confidence. They being the coach, coaching team, you know, and the athlete might have been part of this decision. A lot of confidence he can make this in effect, a seven kilo increase over his own, you know, given the miss on the second attempt, and uh, all for naught. Yeah, the, the question I was going to pose to you, actually, where there's a, quite an interesting debate going on. The British Olympic Authority, they are challenging through the Carnival Court of Arbitration, but they're also putting forward to water that, you know, they maintain that if you're disqualified for a, a doping infringement, um, that you will no longer be eligible for selection for a British team in the Olympic right. Games. Yeah. And of course, that now is a matter of a court decision, ultimately. Someone's challenged it in Britain? Well, yeah, 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 I mean, it's being challenged by WADA as much as anybody yeah. else, because yeah. they're saying it doesn't conform to sure. their yeah. regulations. Yeah. I just wonder what your take would be on it, you know, um, if you have served the, t the WADA right. time for the crime, right, exactly. should your own domestic National Olympic Committee be able to, in a sense, set their own standards and, in fact, overrule? I would quickly say no. Hungary, Fenech, 178. Two kilos up. This for the lead. Well, there you could see the awkwardness that I was talking about. It's as if it's hard for him to get in the position. It looks rusty. Hey, with my answer, does this mean I won't be allowed into your country for the Olympics because I said I don't think the national 
Kind we of should be able no, to not at all. I mean, it's, it, you know, those are. You weren't well, all lined up on the other side of that. Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, it's it. You know, there, there's. If you go and talk to the British athletes, there's one camp who will say, no. If you, if that's what you've done. It's perfectly fair for the British Olympic Association to say, no, you can't compete. Yeah. And, you know, there's another camp, um, perhaps not in volume so many, but enough, who actually say, no, if, if that's that's what it is for the countries according to the wider code, then it's not equitable that, you know, yeah. a British athlete cannot be allowed to compete. Yeah, I mean, I think you need to have a uniform standard, and there should be... A the highest court is it were on that, right? You can't have two standards, especially in something that's such a volatile issue and something that basically determines the life or death of the athlete. If you can't compete, you're basically dead as an athlete. Here comes the birthday boy. Congratulations. He's uh, 24 today. Wife uh, Katya, hopefully watching him and also his one-year-old daughter Ariana although I'm not she, sure she'd be too aware of what dad does for a day job so 180 for the lead Maxim Shako from Vladivostok oh no <laughs> not what he wants to do on his birthday no, and that was a uh, weight that he did lift uh, in December in the Russian National Cup. There's the bump, and maybe relaxed a little bit at the top two. Result is lost lift. So 180 stays on the bar for uh, Mikhail Aldzeev. Second attempt in his case. Aldzeev, who at the moment finds himself in a bronze medal position, but only a kilo behind Gurkhov Bits of Hungary. He represents Belarus, so this for the lead. And 180 would give him a four kilo advantage. Absolutely no problem at all. Really good exhibition and example of executing the snatch discipline. Very little adjustment with the feet and onto the stage comes David uh, Bedjanyan. A lot of anticipation for the clean and jerk, but at this particular moment, just focusing on keeping tabs on his rivals. This is a five kilo increase. Now, this would take him up into second place. He weighed in at 104.76. The man who's in the lead at the moment, 104.73. It's pretty tight. And he's there. So, at the moment, pretty well everything going to plan on that silly, sticky number. Once again, falling off, it's just happened so many times to so many athletes, but one of these days it's going to get caught under the foot or cause a distraction or do something, and I sort of think that only when that happens will the authorities actually take it seriously, that they've got to actually make the number work otherwise. They just might as well dispense of it. David Rigat there, Olympic champion back in Montreal. The mastermind of the Russian team, or at least one of them. Shaker, ooh. Just held on to that. So, second time of asking for the birthday boy. And Shaco, 102. 26, the lightest man in the class, goes into the lead. And we have three men on 180. Sheiko, Aldzeev, Bedzhanyan of Russia. Russia, Belarus, Russia. And the Hungarian down to fourth place ahead of the Ukrainian. And this is Sergei Tajirov going for 180, his last attempt. 104.62. So this would take him from fifth into the silver medal position. But more importantly, it would put him, in terms of kilos, right on terms with the current leaders. 
five lifts remaining in this first half, including this attempt. There's no problem about being noisy, providing you're being successful, and that moves him up. As I said, into second place, Shaco Russia leads. Uh, Tajirov into second place, Alzeir from Belarus down to third. Berjanian off the snatch podium at the moment. And now the Hungarian who's been pushed down to fifth place. Hundred and eighty one kilos, so this by a kilo for the advantage. Now this represents a six kilo improvement on last year. Failure, I'm afraid, leaves him down in fifth place. Before the 2004 Olympics, he competed in the previous year in Vancouver in the World Championships. He finished sixth there and actually in the first part of the competition collected 187 and a half kilos. But of course, that's nine years, or well, we are now nine years on from that time. So four, I should say, uh, three lifts now remaining, and it's going to be uh, Mikhail Alzer for Belarus for the last throw of his desk, going up from 180 to 182. And if you go back in his record of achievement, 2006, in winning the European silver medal, actually collected 186 kilos. But that's history. This is the present. But 182 would give him the lead. And then Bejanian and Shako, the two Russians, would have their last attempts to lift out. He's looked pretty solid on the first two. didn't get the full pull there and is left in third place now Bejanian could change that because he's down in fourth there you can see never completed and there would have been a press out anyway and Bejanian commanding figure comes from Stavropol, same sort of uh, hometown, very close to the great super heavyweight Andre Chamurkin. And although born in Russia of Armenian origin, and now has this third and final attempt. He's gone in five kilo steps, 175, 180, this for 185. In the President's Cup he did 183. So they're pushing him, they're asking him. And I was going to say, if he makes this, he gives himself a really good shout for the overall title. With the cleaning jerk still to come, three white lights and a good sequence there. 185, a new personal best. And that's good lifting by David Banjanian. And remember, the stronger of his suit still to come, but is he going to win the clean and jerk? He's gone into the lead, but now 24-year-old Maxim Shako, the one man who can deny him. He's got the bar at 185. He only has to do 185 simply because he is that much lighter. He's over two kilos lighter than his teammate Bedjanian. 
So he's definitely got the silver. He might, in a few minutes or moments, get the gold. And he's stood up there to take the gold medal away from his teammates. And it's Russia 1, Russia 2 at the halfway stage in the men's 105 kilo competition. And very good lifting by the Russian boys. Six out of six for the pair of them. And they have a five kilo break on Sergei Tazirov of the Ukraine, who's in third place. David Brigett will be absolutely delighted. As you can see, this is the situation at at the halfway stage, 185, 185, three out of three also to Sergei uh, Tajirov and then Alzev of Belarus, 180, and then we drop again to the Hungarian, 176. Uh, I did say six out of six for the Russians, actually it's five out of six, right. but uh, no matter to Maxim.